today let's see how these ice attacks are done in Unreal. It's a great exercise to learn how to use events, meshes and time everything nicely together in Niagara. As usual we made quite a few more versions of this and they are all available on the marketplace and on my Patreon's page too, links below. But we are still gonna show you a simplified version of this. So without further ado let's jump right into this, just wanna say these videos are possible thanks to my patrons and by supporting me you get access to this and many many more assets you can use in your projects. Alright so let's get started, just keep in mind that we are gonna focus more on the motion and on the elements you need rather than the materials themselves. So let's begin by in a folder creating a Niagara emitter with right click in effects, new emitter yes indeed, empty, we are gonna see from scratch and this one is for the spike itself. Double click to open this up and in here we don't want a sprite render, let's remove it, instead on the plus sign let's add a mesh render and on the meshes we can replace this with the spike which by the way we made available for free on the link below among other elements you are going to need for this tutorial. And like I said we are not going to focus much on the material but I can give you a glimpse of what we did. So on the folder with right click we can create a new material, it's going to be very basic with Fresnel effect, double click to open it up, let's create a vector 4 parameter for the color which I actually noticed we don't need only after recording, sorry guys. And another node for Fresnel. This one right here. We want to control this with a scalar parameter, by the way. So let's add one and call it the Fresnel power with a default value of 2, for example. Connect it here and up there. Just gonna say this is white. And then we can multiply these two together. And the color is gonna come from Niagara. So we need the particle color node, by the way. So Niagara can communicate with the material. And then we can multiply these two together and connect to the emissive. So yeah, very straightforward material, very basic. Obviously I would recommend you to replace this with a cool ice material. Anyway, let's create a material instance with right click. We want to keep the original materials separated from the instance, it's a good practice. This one is going to be mi underscore Fresnel and I'm going to drag it outside of this folder and then essentially what we need is to in the spike emitter add the material for the override materials and then select the mi underscore Fresnel we just created the instance. And well we don't see anything yet because we need to emit something, right? First let's say the emitter state, the loop cycle mode is to self. Instead of following the system it's gonna follow itself, which means we can control its loop behavior right here. And then let's add a burst, spawn burst on the emitter update with for example three particles. For now you can try different values. And then initialize particle. We can already take care of the lifetime and say it's random. We can convert this to a range float or switch it up there on the lifetime mode between 2 and 2.2 .2 seconds for example. Let's pick a color for this, the one I have chosen is a little bit too bluish by the way, but you can adjust it yourself and play with this. And then down here what's important is that we say the mesh scale is uniform, a range float between 0 0.7 and 1. And this is what we have, it's something. Now let's make sure this bow in a certain area with the shape location module. Instead of sphere, let's select a torus, where the large radius could be 200, and the handle radius 3. It will essentially spawn in a circle. Now if you want to tilt this, we are going to need the initial mesh orientation in the particle spawn. The mode can be none, but we can turn on rotation down here and make it random, a ranged vector. So they all have a little bit of different rotation. This is the values I'm going to use, by the way. As you can see they are tilted now. Let's work on the way they show up with the scale mesh size in the particle update. In here let's convert this to a curve, let's select all of the keys from all of the curves and we right click, say it's in auto mode so we can control the busy curves, let's unpin the Z curve so we can work only on the X and Y, let's select the first key, say the value is 0 
and then add another key at around 0 0.2 and say its value is 1. Oh, and same thing applies to the X curve, by the way. And more or less at 0 0.8, let's add another key, also with a value of 1, for the Y in the X curve. This way it sustains that size for a little while before coming down. At more or less 0 0.85, we can add another key on the X and Y and say it's 1.1, .1, so it has a little bump before scaling down. Let me fix here the X curve, I forgot to add a key. I'm gonna select the X and Y curve, the keys up here, and say they are in auto mode, so they are a little bit smoother. And finally, I'm gonna isolate the Z and say the first key, the value is 0, add another key at around 0 0.1, 0 0.15 and say its value is 1, and right in front of that, another key with a value of 0 0.9, so it basically has that little bump in the beginning, and then it sustains that size, and it shrinks down. Yeah, something like this. Oh, and by the way, let's say the loop behavior is once, it will be useful down the road. Now, the quick way to add randomness to their size is in the scale mesh size, the scale curve, it can be a random vector, random ranged vector. The minimum will be 1 and the maximum something like 1.5 for all of the axes and you get a really nice randomness to each spike. Cool. And now if we want a mesh at the bottom, a bright spot on the ground as well, in the same position of each spike, we need to generate an event. In this case, a location event on the particle update. We get a warning, basically the Solve forces and velocity module is missing, we can click fix issue. We still have a warning and it's essentially because we need to turn on, if you select the wall emitter, we can turn on the requires persistent IDs. So Niagara can create an ID for each particle essentially. On the generate location event, we want to say the event send rate is 10 per second. Each second is gonna send 10 events. Let's save this. And now let's use this in a Niagara system. Let's create one with right click, create an empty Niagara system. I'm gonna rename it to NES underscore ice attack, for example. Open it up with double click. And in here, on the track plus sign, on the emitters, we can add the NE spike. Great. Let's save this. And so far, this is how it's looking. If you drag and drop this to your scene, this is how essentially it is. Right? Now let's add a mesh at the bottom so it looks like snow or something like that. And for that part we are going to need another Niagara emitter, an empty one as well, for the ground ice. Double click to open this up and, well, first thing we need is replace the sprite render with the mesh render. Once again, this mesh is also on the link below. And like I said in the beginning, this is all part of the ice attacks, Niagara packs, available on the marketplace. Links below, by the way. Let's turn on Enable Material Override so we can assign here the MI underscore Fresnel, the same material. Up here, the emitter state is gonna be self as well. And loop behavior is once, but with a loop duration of 0 to 1, that's very important. If we are emitting on the spike 10 events per second, this one only needs to leave a tenth of that. So it catches only one event, so it spawns only one time. Let's take care of the lifetime, something random between 2 and a half seconds and 2.8. The color, we can say it's, well, a bright white, for example. And to have a different rotation to each one, on the particle spawn we need the initial mesh orientation. Let's say the mesh orientation mode is none. Let's turn on rotation, make it a range vector between 0 and all of the axes. Except for the Z, the maximum, let's leave it at 1. And let's control the way it scales up. And while making the tutorial, we discovered that the scale mesh size doesn't work quite well when it's receiving events. So let's use a set parameter here. And on the plus sign, we can control the scale of the particle itself. And then convert this to a curve. It probably is a bug. But that's the workaround to use the scale of the particle instead of scale mesh size. And with this curve now we can control how it appears. I'm gonna unpin the Z curve. And for the X and Y the first curve is gonna be 0. And then add another key at 0 0.1 with a value of 1. 
do the same for the X and then add another key at around 0.7 with a value of 1 for the X and the Y that's it, so it grows up and then it shrinks down let's hide them and only show the Z because the first key is going to be 0 and then we can add another key at around 0 0.2 so it grows up to 1 and then it sustains to around 0 0.7 and shrinks once again let's show all of the curves select all of the keys and turn on auto let me just fix this handle right here alright like this looking good now if we want this to receive events from the spike we need an event handler up here on the stage the spawn number is going to be 1 and the execution mode is spawn particles and most importantly now we need the receive location event which we are going to set up on the Niagara system let's save this and on the Niagara system yeah down here we can add on the track the ground ice and now we just need to link these two together by going to the event handler and the source is going to be the location event of the spike and here we go every time now the spikes spawn they have precisely below them a little puff of snow and like i said you can try different meshes different materials what's most important is the motion and the way we set up this in niagara right let me just increase a little bit the scale of the ground ice on the emitter in the x and y 1.5 yeah something like this you get the idea right looks awesome you can do so many cool stuff with this now the process to add a ground particle is pretty much the same we are going to need the new emitter because the last one was for a mesh and it keeps things organized on this ground particle emitter the emitter state needs to be self so it works properly with generate events as well as once and a loop duration of 0 0.1 so it catches one of those events only one that comes from the spike and the lifetime for example can be 2.4 the color well we can leave it at 0 0.2 0 0.2 for the rgb and the sprite size mode could be random but let's use a new form 600 will do just fine and now very importantly on the sprite render we don't want this to face the camera so in the alignment let's say it's custom alignment as well as the facing mode is custom facing vector because now on the particle spawn we are going to use sprite facing and alignment module that will help us face this so it's parallel with the ground you could also use decals for this but this is fine as long as you set the z to 1 and 0 for the x and y and then yeah we can fade it out at the end with the scale color you can even create a gradient for example if you set these to rgba together and then convert this to a curve we will get this cool gradient where we can fade in the beginning the keys at the bottom are the alpha the transparency and the top is the color and fade at the end as well and if you want it can be brighter in the beginning by setting this key the value to 5 and that's essentially it again very important is to add the event handler up here on the stage and add the receive location event plus on the event handler properties we need to say it's spawned particles and the spawn number is 1 if you save this all we gotta do is go back to the angry system and link this first let's add the emitter on the plus track down here and now we can link this by saying that the event handler the source is a location event that comes from the spike and here we go we have a sprite at the bottom a glow it could be used for a crack on the ground or something like that again this method would also work with decals if you set up a decal for this but that's essentially it now let's see how to create a cascade effect from this I'm sure there's better ways but this is the easiest one and quickest one so the trick is to select these three emitters and with ctrl c ctrl v create the duplicate of this push them down here and with right click isolate them and the most important thing is to go to each event handler and make sure the source is now from the new spikes as you can see it's spike 001 location event which is the one we duplicated let's do the same for the ground particles exactly and from here what really matters is that we delay these second spikes we can do it in the spawn burst instantaneous with a small value like 0 0.1 and now for this to work properly on the emitter state of the ground ice 
as you can see this doesn't show anything at the bottom because this is only looping once and it's missing the first event sent from the spike so on the loop behavior let's say it's multiple let's say it has a second loop loop count is 2 and the loop duration could be smaller like 0 0.05 that's enough to only grab one event nothing really shows up because we still need to have a loop delay here of 0 0.1 the same value we have delayed it on the spike and here we go it only spawns one time the ground ice let's do the same for the ground particles it's going to be multiple loop count of two and a loop delay of, of 0 0.1 the same that we have set on the spike here we go looking good but they are still probably in the same position as the first wave of spikes right so for the second wave of spikes we can go to the initialized particle of the spike and in position of set for example, in X, say it's 800, and increase probably a little bit the size to 1 and 1.5 for the mesh scale. On the scale of the ground ice, we can also increase a little bit the scale curve to 1.7. And on the initialized particle of the ground particle, let's say it's 800, and here we go. Now let's create another. Let's select this and get out of isolation mode with right click. We go to the beginning, and here we go. Yeah, they are maybe a little bit too far from each other, but we can, for example, we will see that in a moment. For now, let's create the third wave. Control C, Control V of this second wave. And for this third wave, we are going to do the same on the spawn, isolate them. On the event handlers, let's say the location event is from the spike 002. And then in the spawn burst instantaneous of the spike, we can delay this something like 0 0.2, for example, and increase the count to 5. As a matter of fact, we can increase also the count of the spike 0 0 1 on the second wave to 4. Here we go. Now on the ground ice, on the emitter state, the loop delay is going to be 0 0 0.2 as well, so it matches the delay of, of the spike 0 0 0.2, as well as for the ground particle, delay of 0 0.2. And here we go. They are working well. I'm just gonna increase the spike, the mesh scale to 1.4 and 2, and the scale of the ground ice to 1.9, and that's pretty much it. The same for the ground particle, 1000. Disable isolation mode, and here we go. Let me see what's happening here. Oh, yeah, we need to have set the third wave of spikes, something like 1800, for example. Oh, by the way, on the shape location, you can increase the radius to 400 of the third wave. And for the second spike, you can increase it to something like 300. It will look a little bit better. But yeah, you get the idea, right? That's how you create this cascade effect of this spike attack. It looks really awesome, in my opinion. So that's it, guys. And if you want to get your hands on all of these ice attacks, which they are available on the marketplace and on my Patreon page, as well as on my website, links below. If you want to support me on my Patreon, you will get access to plenty more assets that you can use in your projects. Links below. I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month. And a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Alberto Sajeris, Alex C, Alan Alstad, Aviat Tobali, Cybercredit, Daniel Schmidt, Deluxe Edu, Diaku, Diag Marcos, Lua Ama, Ed Dreamer, Frosty Forty, Grub Lab, Julian Salazar, Casey Miller, Cantals Waffer, Leon Holt, Matt Moran, Mike Bell, Mike Young, Oitz, Pierre Mayer Leroux, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, RVR, Sean Aguilar, Stefanik Jarsnowski, Teen, Travis McCall, Mary Suta, Whatever Marta, Will Pullion, Zoya Koinash, Virginia Seru, To Nakato, Xian Pianlin, and Mi J Kim. Thank you all very much for your support, you guys are awesome. I hope you are enjoying these Unreal Engine tutorials and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you, bye.